does it get any better than this? His opponent is a Polish Terran player who's really been impressing in the weekly cups. But boy does he have a tough opponent today. Because our Zerg player in the top left never mails it in. He's not a Sarah Few or a Sarah Sum. He's a Sarah! Current World Rank 1. Okay, okay, Terran's got an extra SCV headed out here. That is officially not normal. Second SCV gonna join him. Looks like we've got ourselves a double Rax rush. Belay that order, Mr. LaForge. It's looking like a triple. And it's a hatch first for Zerg. That's not ideal. Oh, it's very far back. Soul doesn't want to get detected here. But that's gonna mean it's gonna arrive a little bit late. But I gather the idea is with the triple is that it hits with just that much more power. Serral has absolute zero for defense right now. He doesn't know it, but he's on the clock. Here comes his extractor pool. That would be a good start because that triple Rax is humming. Soul is forming a triangle of pain. Actually, he seems to be toying with the idea of making a quadruple Rax. But if our Terran player intends to defeat the likes of Serral, he's gonna have to make a deal with the devil, perhaps even sell his soul. Current world rank 32. It is indeed a quadruple. If Serral's true to form, he's only gonna make four lings. Each ling will get his own marine dancing partner. Serral does have an overlord racing across the map. At some point, he is gonna know something's up. But first, he's gonna get his natural to pop, which will be immediately followed by this spawning pool. That's gonna lead into two queens and four lings. But the first two marines are already off the shelf. Soul is clearly making a bulk purchase. These are Costco Marines. Oh, this series is gonna be off to a terrific start. And they're off. Soul's bringing two SCVs with this, looking like a bunker rush. Serral's actually got an overlord in place to spot this attack path. If he's watching, of course he's watching, it's Serral. He sees it instantly. Oh, he's gonna lose a Ling, that's a first blood, and he's also gonna lose an overlord. Great pickup, Soul is off to a terrific start. He drops the two bunkers. The first one is in range of that hatch. Oh, Serral gets what a big threat this is. He starts three spines immediately at his main. He's gonna sack his natural. Look at that, he's hiding his queen in the back. Soul can't see that. It's gonna be one base Terran versus one base Zerg. Soul's reinforcing Marines are arriving. Serral's put down a Roach Warren. And he's getting a second extractor. He's probably thinking Ravagers. It's one way to retaliate against bunkers. Cyril cancels one spine. He's got vision of exactly what the threat level is now and he knows what he thinks he needs. Hatch is about to fall. It's a broodling stampede. Soul retreats for the bunker. Oh, the Marines all got away safely. And Soul gets to work on his transition. Rax flying home, extra SCVs headed home for mining duty. And he's building a second command center directly at his natural. Meanwhile, Cyril is locked into his main. Serral's not making lings. He looks like he's waiting for his roach warrant. Spoke too soon, he's gonna make a play with one of his spine crawlers. Soul's marines go right at it. Roach warrant completes. Roaches are now in production. The spine has to flee to the mineral line. It's guarded by the queen. But Serral could lose that queen if he's not careful. Five roaches on order at the main. Soul's actually getting himself a worker lead out of this. And he's starting up a third command center. If Serral thinks Soul is all in, it'll be a bad misread for him. Oh, it's a jailbreak. The second spine crawler screens and soaks the hits for the lings who escape. Serral wants to generate some offense, but Soul is not neglecting his defense. He's built a wall out of his Raxes, and he's actually putting a bunker behind it. Serral's got Ravagers now. He has the tech advantage. The files are gonna rip those bunkers. Oh, and he does the blight technique. As soon as a roach falls low on hit points, he mutates it into a Ravager. Bunker 1 falls! Soul did get some roach kills though. Terran is looking really good on the resources lost column. Roaches are given chase. They gotta be careful about going up that ramp blind though. Oh, Zeril knows that. He pulls back. He's way too wily. Lings are on their way back. They found a wall they couldn't penetrate. Soul's last few marines are trying to hide, but I think they're gonna get picked apart. Did Serral see them? 
He's either acting like he didn't see them or he's prioritized going after the Terran as his top job. Oh, look at this concussive shell upgrade for Soul. He plans to have upgraded marauders waiting for those roaches. There's already one in the bunker. Cyril could lose a ton trying to break that. I think he agrees he's headed home. And now Soul is headed to attack the Zerg. He's actually gonna catch the spines on Earth. Does he want the queen or the spine? Oh, it's neither, he's going for the ramp. The Lynx try to give chase, but there's not enough of them. Oh, but the Ravagers can handle this. They outrange and outdamage those Marines. You unshielded, unstimmed pieces of iron dung. Well, Sol at least got a nice look out of Cyril's base out of it. If Cyril had scouting intel, he'd know that Sol is making a factory and he's got a third orbital ready. And Cyril's ahead of me as per usual. He's sneaking an overlord in to see. And whatever he's seen so far has encouraged him to get going on his lair. The overlord doesn't see that Sol's going for double eBay's and gas three and four. Oh, Sol's gonna try to shut that overlord down. He might have actually committed enough Marines to actually do it. Oh yeah, he gets it. No supply block, but it certainly doesn't hurt. I can't believe it, but this game is actually looking like it's gonna stabilize. Cyril got his replacement hatch down and his third. And his sixth sense tells him he needs double Evo chambers to keep up with the Terran's upgrades. Cyril's got his lings in position to try to keep tabs on the potential for Terran's third base. He's able to rule out the lateral third, but he doesn't actually have vision of the triangular third. And that's where Sol's gonna put it. Oh, but Cyril has deduced it. He's sending his ravagers. Oh, this is classic Cyril. He doesn't see it, but he knows it's there anyway. Cyril's deductions give him map hacking vision. It's true what they say, the Night King sees all things in the darkness. No defense at the third, Cyril caught Soul trying to make a bunker. He's gonna pick up a couple SCVs in that all-important early mule. Cyril may be playing from behind, but this is how he gets back into this game. I love how Soul's using stars on his command centers. It's defensive camouflage. He's trying to look like Clem. When most creatures of the wild see a command center with a star, they just turn and run. Cyril getting his roach speed and double numeric upgrades. Soul also getting his double numerics, but also stim and combat shields. He's gonna finish that bunker at his third and load it with marines this time. Reactor medevacs for Soul. Terran still has the mineral lead and he's starting to assemble a real army here. Oh, he's confident, he's salvaged his bunker. How you could ever feel you don't need a bunker when you're playing against Cyril is beyond me. If you give me a quadruple supply lead and I'd still feel like I needed a bunker. Cyril getting a quick infestation pit. Is that just to get to Hive or is he actually thinking Swarm Host? Soul hasn't pushed out yet. Could be he's waiting for that second medevac. He's gonna have a 1-1 timing window soon. Oh, Soul's thinking about a drop here. Double medevacs loading up. This game continues to entertain. With everything that's been going on, Cyril's only got three queens, zero spores. What he's actually making is infestors. His infestation pit was actually meant for infestors. Oh, the surprise value of Soul's drop has been spoiled, but he does get an overlord in payment. I wonder if Cyril can use fungal growth as his drop defense. Ah, oh, he's recycling his spine crawlers to help guard his fourth. They are long healed up. Solo quickly figures out that's not the attack path he wants. He picks up, fakes left, and cuts right. I love that, trying to plant the seed of misinformation in his opponent's mind. And then he's actually got a third medevac loading up. A lot of cool mind games going down for Soul right now. With the vision of his creep, Cyril spots the double medevac. He slides over to the right to meet it. The Zerg has the tools to shut this down. Soul knows that he picks up and boosts for the main. That is a very Bion-esque maneuver. If you ever get caught, just go deeper. But Cyril's anticipated that and has roaches there too. What he doesn't have is enough queens to really punish all this flying around. If he lands a fungal though, he could get his ravagers to finish the job. Soul lands his command center and technically he's got his fourth up before the Zerg. Even though he's attacking, Soul is not giving up his economic lead here. He's still up eight workers and pulling in more minerals and gas. Cyril's queens are really stretched thin here. He's using that rope speed to compensate and try to be in all places at once. Soul says if you're protecting your heart, you can't be protecting your periphery. He scans and guts some of the creep. While this is all going on, Soul's making tanks back at his main. He's almost up to four, which means at some point he's gonna have a big army to push out with. 
Oh, I so want to see those infestors snag a medevac. Serral's making nine roaches, yet he's still behind on supply. Yeah, Soul's got this big army waiting in the wings. He's got a card to play here. Soul's drops have not been impactful, but they're just a diversion. Oh, Lurker Den goes down for Serral. There, fungal on the Marines. That's gonna let Serral eviscerate the drop. He then turns his attention on breaking down the rocks in front of his fourth. Oh, free shots. A low Marine pops out of the bushes and tries to take free shots. Oh, it's that aforementioned trump card time. Four tanks and a huge whack of Marines are pushing out. This is Soul's plus two plus two timing. This drop here is just to keep the defenders occupied so we can get position. Oh, and Soul's gonna add reactor liberators. That's a fantastic choice against an opponent who's light on queens. Oh, Soul was very conservative here. He really set up far back. That's definitely safer for him, but he's got a long way to push in if he really wants to get that fourth. Perhaps he's just waiting for those liberators to help him set up. Yes, he is. It's the happy pink concentric circles of doom. Oh, that's a lot of tank. They're still far back, but that is a lot of tank. Serral's gonna bum rush the choke. Terran stims and Zerg wisely pulls back. Soul's a bit light on medevacs here. If Serral can force out enough stims, that Terran army could get pretty soft. Both our players have recently maxed. Corrosive Biles have a range of 9, Siege Tanks 13. This is tough work for Ravagers, but Serral's one of the best in the business. Sol moves in with his infantry and with his Liberators. Serral rushes to the defense. Liberators siege out, Biles away! Uncles and Biles kill one Liberator, but the second survives. Sol is reinforcing with more tanks! Roaches flanking from the south. Both player supplies are dropping. Who's got this? Huge commitment by Terran. Zero making 20 roaches. Tank splatting away. That is GG. Soul takes game one of the series. I did not see that coming. That was super close. We got to look at that. So I've got a freeze frame of the moment that Serral hits the GG key. At this point, Serral is up one supply. Let's at least call that tie. He's up 11 on army, meaning he's ahead. The mining is about even. And the players are tied on upgrades. In terms of tech, Serral has his Lurker Den available, if not the upgrades for it. Not normally a point that you would GG out in a game. Two notes, though. Firstly, Serral's supply is primarily roaches, and that artificially inflates things. Blizzard designed the roach to cost more supply than its actual value, so there's a hidden cost for the roach, requiring more overlords and taking up cap space if you go heavy on them. So the supply isn't quite as good as it looks. Second, I suspect Serral believes he's about to lose his fourth base. And if that's true, the income picture changes significantly. He might believe he'd inevitably be ground down, regardless of whether he can defend the current attack wave. I don't want to dwell on it. In the chaos, Serral may have just misapprehended the situation and thought he was further behind than he was. Or he may just have been deliberately thinking further ahead and didn't want to play it out for inevitable loss when he could still come back in the series through the next game. Thinking about whether Serral had actually lost when he threw in the towel did spark a memory of something I want to talk about, though. Back in June, Frost Giant Games came out with a really neat discussion post on Reddit on the victory condition for StarCraft. They ask us, what is the victory condition for StarCraft? Well, duh, of course it's to eliminate all of your opponent's buildings. They then ask us to think about that. Isn't it kind of weird that that's a thing that doesn't actually ever happen? I mean, sure, it does happen occasionally, but it's pretty rare. I've got well over 100 games on this channel, and it only happens in one of them, which is a really cool game, by the way, if you missed it. Frost Giant's point is, that's kind of counterintuitive for new players. For me, it doesn't bother me really in the slightest. I've grown up with it. But Frost Giant is asking because they're thinking heavily about how to best onboard new players to their new game. They point out that if the victory condition is to destroy buildings, new players might understandably think it's a good idea to attack their opponent's buildings. That's rarely a winning strategy in RTS long term. I'm not so worried. Again, I think people are pretty smart, particularly RTS players, and they'll catch on quick. But it's cool because I honestly never really thought all that much about it. And then it gets really interesting when Frost Giant reveals what they think 
is the real victory condition of StarCraft and by extension a lot of RTS games. Keep in mind here, Frost Giant is largely composed of ex-Blizzard employees and some of the key architects of the game. The real victory condition is demoralizing your opponent to the point that they leave the game. Whoa, that is heavy. Is that what's been happening to me? Is that what I've been doing to people? Man, I never really thought about that before. Dude, I thought it was just a game. Anyways, the upshot of this is, Frost Giant is thinking about what it all means and if there might be a better way, I more fun, maybe a point system, or who knows. But it's all very interesting to think about, except that at this moment I'm more interested to see if Sol can eliminate Serral in a best of three. He's got the Night King on the ropes here. In 17 tries dating back to 2016, Sol has never been able to do it. Up one is the closest he's ever come. I think, I think he can taste it. Let's get to it. Adjutant, if you would please. The game begins now. Ooh, bad map draw for Serral. Zerg does not particularly like Beckett Industries right now. It's a short map with nasty choke points that Zergs do not appreciate. Our Terran player is rushing again. Clearly, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. He is the master of his fate. He is the captain of his soul! I know I'm a dork, but I just love that poem. Our Zerg player always signs his letters with sincerely, because of course, he's Serral! That's me, ever scraping the bottom of the barrel, but look here, we've got an early spawning pool. Is that a reaction to what happened in game one? Or is Serral just playing the map here? Either way, it's a great call, he just made this a lot tougher for Soul. It's gonna be at least a triple rax here. We'll see if he goes for four again. Here comes the delayed hatch. Oh, and look, it's the see-through kind. Looks like a bowl of blue jello. Anybody hungry? Not me. There's gas for Zerg. Notice that the proxy is a lot closer than it was in game one. The rush distance is gonna be practically zero. Soul's initial rax is gonna finish up, and then we will see the production of Marine number one. Both a barracks and a spawning pool take the exact same amount of time to build, 46 seconds. Soul started first, but the spawning pool's now done. Zerglings take 17 seconds, Marines 18. This could play out a lot different than game one. Soul's getting his orbital, that tells us he probably means to transition like he did in game one. All three Raxes are done, there's no fourth one this time, oh he's going now! Soul is not queuing up units this time. He is bringing SCVs though, looks like another bunker rush. Serral's gonna spot it early with his ling. He's gonna try to pick off an SCV. But a reinforcing marine puts a stop to that. The first bunker is down. Serral has a roach warrant underway. No spine crawlers being made this time, just more lings. Hatch is gonna pop, there's three marines on the scene now. And they are going to work in earnest. Serral's actually sending his original two lings across the map. Four marines now tearing into that bunker. Soul has finished a depot wall at his main. Oh, off screen first blood. Bad Zug's wing. Bad. Looks like two dead lings and one dead marine. Serral's trying to break that wall. He's going to be able to add two more lings to the wall demolition effort. Five roaches in production. And a queen is coming down the ramp. The hatch is down to half less. The queen can hit the SCVs out of the range of the bunker. TVs are dead and a second queen arrives. A marine's trying to rescue the wall, but there may be too many lings there. Zero rescues a roach with a ravager morph, and now the bunker's dropping faster than the hatch. The bunker cracks open like a can of rancid soup, and it's GG! Whew! It took Zero a whole three minutes to tie up the series. Now, because it matters so incredibly much, I've got to sort out who gets the first blood from this game. You can't have a early game feature like First Blood and then just miss it. So there's four Lings coming down, one Marine advanced. That Marine is dead, but so is the Ling. Who dies first? 
Oh, dude, it's a photo finish. Let's see that again. It looks like it was awarded to Terran. Okay, here we go. One tenth speed zoomed in. Is it a Marine or is it a Ling? No, the Marine's health bar disappears first. That's a Zerg first blood. And we can confirm it with the resources lost bar. You can see there was a brief moment of time in which the red Terran player has lost 50 minerals, but the blue Zerg player has lost nothing. Sorry, this is all just fun for me, because of course the players really just don't care. The stat that matters, of course, is that Serral got the W, Soul got the L. We got a tied series, and we're going to game three. Good on Serral for going pool first, and with the defender's advantage, he makes that hold look easy. Adjutant, if you would please. The game begins now. Game three. And the only thing I really want to know is, is it going to be three Rax rushes in a row? Looks like we've got an SCV out on the map already. I guess our Terran player knows if he's going to win, he's going to have to give it his heart and soul. Yep, definitely another rush. Well, one thing's for sure, our Zerg player is going to have to take this serialously. And he always takes things seriously, because he's Cyril! And this time it's going to be gas first for Cyril. Cyril, who is usually so unvaried, has a different opening every game so far. Soul going back to the hide the racks technique. That's not really an optimal location in terms of speed for getting to your opponent's base. The positive is nobody's looking there for a very long time. Spawning pools down for Cyril, that's nice and quick. Only two Raxes for Sol, at least so far. He's only sent over two SCVs. Cyril is going to expand though. But unfortunately, we're not going to get that crystal clear membrane that we had in game two. This one's much more pus filled. Hold on, gas for Sol. This is definitely different. Double gas. He's got three SCVs on gas already. And that's because he's going Reapers, not Marines. Soul is awesome. He's going to roll the dice on a Reaper rush. One possible reason that comes to mind is because we're playing on 2000 Atmosphere. This is a map with double Reaper doors. But you almost never see them actually used. This is kind of cool. Cyril's already making his opening four lings. And that's before the first Reaper's even out. He's also started ling speed. And his queen is halfway done. I think Sol was really hoping for a hatch first opening. I mean, who expects to be rushed three times in a row? Oh, is he going to get scouted before he even gets his reapers out? No, Serral pulls back with his lings. He might be considering a play for the front door. There's no wall yet. Serral's not supposed to have lings this early. Yeah, he's grouped them together into four. Reaper one is done, two's about to finish. But they are out of position. Serral's committing to this. He's making six more lings. Oh, and a spine crawler. He definitely knows what's up here. Soul could be in trouble here, but he's got one big punch to play. Oh, he can get his wall up. If he can lock out those lings, Serral's defense back at home is going to be weak. No, he th Soul didn't see it. He didn't raise the depot. Four lings are in, and there's no defense. The SCV should be able to handle that. But now Soul knows his Reapers have to go. No, he pulls him back to wait, but there's an overlord there. Now he's going to go, but Serral's had a chance to set his defense. And the Reapers overpower the Queen. Oh, he actually had time to bring a second one over. And Serral's got a pool of Lings. We're gonna need to see some Reaper Micro here. Lings have speed, they're going for the surround. Serral gets it at his GG. Dang, that was fast. Serral wins two games and takes the series and does it in even less time than it took Sol to win his one game. How is that even fair? In game three, Serral read Sol like a book.
He read them like a PDF on maximum zoom. He read Soul like a Kindle with a steamy romance novel. Not like I would know or anything. Cyril had his overlord in the perfect position to see those reapers coming in. And when he did, he reacted perfectly. He positioned his queens to buy him exactly enough time for Ling Speed to finish. And then he murdered those reapers in a heinous fashion that only the Night King can. I'm glad you caught this series. Game 1 was actually really cool. I'm going to remember that one for quite a while. Special thanks to all the new subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. And I'm so grateful for those of you who have joined me game after game. It's been good games and I hope to share some more. So from my base to yours, Zugs Wang out. To continue your StarCraft journey, Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stimpack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugs Wang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugs Wang out.